The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs> oh, hello and welcome back to the Ben... Oh wait, I just sent this text message. Heck Show. In today's episode, we're going to be continuing the... Wait. Okay, I don't need to read that notification. We're gonna be continuing the simple cell phone project that will allow us to make a bare bones phone unlike all the smartphones that are distracting everyone today. Oh, hold on. Uh, all right, the weather looks okay. Let's get started. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. I have my parser code mostly working, so I can use my computer to simulate the radio module sending data back to the AVR. So the AVR will ping it every few seconds and say like, hey, uh, what's the battery power? What's the signal strength? And then the radio module will respond with what it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in what the radio module would say in response. And the characters don't have to be exact but they have to be in the right space. So I'm gonna say that the battery is 99% and then these characters don't really matter, nor do these, okay. All right, so uh, then it takes 99% battery, divides it by 10, so we have zero through 10 lines of battery power here. So now the battery is almost full. Let's see if we can get it all the way full. Let's say 100, there it goes. All right, and the command to set the signal strength is CSQ. And let's say that it's got really good signal. I'm gonna say 31. Okay, so now the bars are all filled up. And now let's say you've got really bad signal, like if you're in this shop, for instance. Oh no, only one bar of signal. All right, so now that we know that AVR is interpreting those codes correctly, we can hook it into the radio and see if when it asks for the codes, if it can interpret the real codes from the radio, like it's been doing these codes that I've been typing in manually. But see, this way I know that it works before I hook it up to the, to the radio. To see if the signal reading is correct, we'll take it outside to get a reading and then take it to the back of the shop where cell phones go to die to get a reading. Okay, here we are outside. We have three out of four bars, which is pretty good. Can you hear me now? And in the back of the shop, we only get one bar as suspected, but it shows that the meter is working. I've come outside to make sure I can get a good signal and I'm gonna have Allison call me using my phone to this SIM card so I can see if I can have a conversation with her using this small microphone and speaker. Uh, go ahead, Allison. Boy, I sure hope Allison calls me, maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, someone's calling me. Hello, this is Ben. Oh, how's it going? Uh, yes, it's kind of disconcerting because I can hear you in the background, but there's a lag to the cell phone call. Well, it appears like the uh, microphone and headphone work, so yay. Okay, bye. Now that we know everything works, it's time to think about how we're actually gonna build the phone unit itself. So here's the phone module. I'm thinking it will actually go like this over the battery, and these headers will be going the opposite direction actually, so they can plug into a custom PCB that we're going to laser paint. Uh, Felix has been working on this. There's small surface mount tack switches that'll take up less space, and the phone module will actually plug into the bottom of it here. And then on the back of it, we'll have the microcontroller. So when it's put together like this, it will actually nest together pretty well. And then we will have the screen. The screen will go at the top like this. And instead of putting it down into this PCB, we'll actually put it up into it because it'll actually, you know, take up less space that way. If we put it above the PCB, it makes it thicker. If we put it below the PCB, it makes it thinner. And then we'll probably put the speaker on one end and the microphone on the other. So the total thickness of this, it shouldn't be too bad. Maybe, maybe about three quarters of an inch. Uh, so it's not gonna be the thinnest thing on earth, but we are gonna try to keep the footprint 
as small as possible. Basically on the XY, not much bigger than this battery. I'm going to be working on an enclosure design for the phone and Felix is stuffing the PCB we made with parts so we can have our own phone system. So we've got the double-sided PCB and uh, Ben wants me to put the components onto it. I got the schematic up here an Eagle CAD for reference and I figure I'll start with the diodes and then I'll put on the push buttons. And then on the back side I'll put on the microcontroller and the crystal. I think I'll use some of this sticky backing to help me keep this PCB flat and stable while I'm soldering. So now I've got all the diodes in place and next I'll put on the push buttons. So I just put on all the buttons. Uh, the diodes are in, the buttons are in place. Next I'm going to put on a resistor capacitor, the crystal, and the IC. So I'm going to put on this Atmel uh, AT Mega. It's, it's already been flashed and uh, I got the data sheet up here to make sure I got the orientation proper on this circuit here. And I don't want to put it on upside down or backwards or anything. So the, the crystals are on pins 7 and 8, which I have right here. This is where the crystals are, so that's, so that's good. And to help it stay in place while I solder it, I'm going to put on a little bit of uh, flux paste so that it doesn't move around so much. And it will also help the solder flow. And I'm not really going to put too much of it on because the solder that I have has a rosin core. And I put this other horseshoe tip on my soldering iron so it will help with this. So now that I have it tacked in place with these two leads, I'll go ahead and solder the rest and we'll be ready to try it. Felix has stuffed the PCB that we designed, so let's take a look at it before we design the case. All right, so we have the uh, array of buttons here and we've made the wires all nice and flat so everything will fit inside the case. We've built in the speaker right there. Here's our main power switch. Here's the OLED screen. And the back of it, we have the crystal the microcontroller, again, the power switch, and the headers for programming, which we don't really need anymore, and the header to attach the phono module. So we basically made this all modular, so it goes together pretty, pretty simply, and it's also easy to take apart. So we'll probably whip the antenna around this inside of the case. And then we've even installed the microphone right there, so that, you know, basically there's complete disconnect between these two halves. You can remove them easily. So as far as this is gonna to go together, it'll be basically like this. All right, yeah. So I'm gonna draw this into the computer and then we can 3D print a case and finish the build. Here we are in Adobe Illustrator. We have the PCB we designed, the switch, the OLED, the speaker, and the microphone. So that's how that all goes together. We also have keys that will go in front of it and the front panel, which I believe I will make look like that with kind of a cutesy message. We also have to draw on the battery for reference behind it and the casing around it. We also need to do a depth version of it since we're starting in 2D. This shows us how the cases will lock together right there. And also the thickness of things like the switches and the gap that we need for the USB port because you need to be able to stick the USB into it to charge it. All right. All right, so I'm gonna take some of these files and make them on the laser and print the other ones on my 3D printer. Let's go. Now it's time for a tech timeout. It's really hard to put lavalier mics onto a t-shirt because the cord goes down here and you have to do your t-shirt like that and it's kind of at a bad angle. It's really meant for collars, lapels, jackets. But you know, a lot of people wear t-shirts. So I thought it'd be cool if I designed a little clip for it. Check this out. The mic goes onto the clip, pointing straight up. There's even some little tabs here to put the cordal around. 
And then you just squeeze it onto the shirt. And it will keep it vertical for when you're talking and away from your shirt. Uh, obviously, we can print black, gray, blue ones or different colored shirts, but this one shows up good on camera. Yeah. So necessity is the mother of 3D printing invention. I'm going to have this object on Thingiverse, so if you need it for your production, go ahead and download it. I'm going to put together the front half of it first. There's a structure, which I 3D printed, a laser cut plate, which will look nice, along with some useful phrases for life, <laughs> a piece of plastic that goes in front of the screen, and then the uh, laser cut keypad, which Felix assembled for me. And when it goes together, it kind of looks like an ancient calculator, but you know, it's kind of the point. All right, so let me just make sure I've got this. Okay, yeah, so there's a slot for the power switch and for the USB. So I'll start by gluing the case together and then I will stick the components into it. gonna wrap the antenna inside the case you know so you can get a signal not in this shop though <laughs> don't tell the axe murderers that they'd be like <laughs> you'll never escape the shop I shortened the leads on this battery and I'm gonna wrap some captain tape around it to insulate it and then we can stick it in the back half of the case Plug it in, and that's pretty much it. There it is. The simple cell phone. Simplify. Because clutter is chaos. we have for today. On the next episode of the Ben Tech Show, we're headed across the pond to England to go to EMF camp. But don't worry, we're going to be taking some cool hacks and projects with us. We'll see you then. Hey, Ben Heck Show fans. Beginning in September, the Ben Heck Show will no longer be available on the Revision 3 network. Be sure to change your dial to watch us on YouTube or over on the Element 14 community as we continue to bring you great weekly builds and bonus content. So it's like a boy band version of Spice Girls. I don't think that would ever, ever work. We also discussed the challenges of making double-sided PCB circuit boards. Redundant. That and Zigga Zigga. <laughs> so I've just wired, or uh, I didn't even wire them. I, <laughs> there's no wiring here. But don't worry, we're gonna bring it. Ah, shoot. I'll call you back. <laughs> I think I'm just tired of filming things. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.